Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. If you would like to support this channel, please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. And now let's start with the first story. It's called, if it is that bad. My last job was okay, but not fantastic. We were always short staffed and as a result we had to make up for any time lost due to absence or illness. But the real trial was our boss, who was one of those seagull bosses, always wanting drastic changes to everything, no matter how unnecessary they were or how much harder it would make our work. He also constantly threatened to fire people. I had a mess up the previous year. I admit it was on me and my supervisor, a very good one, helped me to sort it out and make sure it didn't happen again. But we had received some customer complaints and I was paranoid about getting more. And oh boy, did the boss like to hold that over my head. Anyway, more than a year later, I apply on a rim to a very well regarded company in my town. To my surprise, I get the position. It's much better run and organized, so it's a great deal. But I do feel a bit bad for my old work since we are about to hit a very busy season. At least until my boss called and said he'd received a complaint about me and I needed to shape up or I'd be fired. I was really upset. But then, wait a minute, it's been the dead season just now. I haven't done anything to get complaints. I messaged my supervisor and yep, no complaints since the last year. Boss was either making it up or pretending the complaints were from this year. So I decided this was the perfect opportunity. I messaged my boss and told him that since there were so many complaints and I wasn't getting any better, it would be best for me to step down from my role as I obviously could not do it. Immediate backpedal on his part. Suddenly the complaints didn't mean anything. I could get a raise, sick leave, anything. Since it wouldn't be the first time he'd promised us the moon and delivered a ball of dirt, I didn't budge. He'd been telling me all year that I was on the verge of being fired and wasn't good enough for my role, so it was best I go. He hung up and got the poor supervisor to call instead. She tricked pretty quickly when I mentioned where I'd be working now and all but said that if she got the chance, she would jump ship for that too. Anyway, been at my new work for two years now and it's great, no regrets. The next story is called No Overtime Allowed. My employer had started a zero overtime rule for a couple of months to try and avoid paying overtime. Well, in order to comply with this rule, I, unfortunately, have to leave a job partly unfinished but could get right back to it the next day and finish it quite quickly. I get back to work the next day and my boss, Mike, needs to see me right away. He asked me why I had left the task unfinished and I reminded him about the zero overtime. I didn't understand the issue. I clocked out on time and intended to finish my task the next day. Well, Mike told me he had gotten a complaint from his boss, Jerry, about the unfinished task. Apparently, it was a task that needed to be completed the day it had been assigned, but I was not informed of this. Mike knew I had not been informed that the task needs to be completed the same day because he was the one who had assigned me the task. He never told me it needed to be completed that same day. This explanation did not sit well with Jerry. He wanted me written up for leaving the task unfinished. But Mike pointed out the zero overtime rule and asked Jerry what would have happened had I had gotten overtime. Jerry apparently said I would have been written up for getting overtime and he did not understand why he needed to explain that. I was not written up and did not get in trouble. But it was interesting how Jerry seemed to think he could have it both ways of no overtime or you'd get written up but if you have to get overtime to finish that task then you get written up. The third story is called, do it fast. Years ago, I worked as a subcontractor testing groundwater rails. Fresh out of college, I was just happy to get a job post 08 crash and was fairly naive about work climate, workload expectations and work-life balance. I got hired on as a field technician for a subcontracting company that tested groundwater wells, servicing a wide range of environmental consulting firms, oil and gas and state agencies. We typically ran solo, pumping wells, sampling and shipping samples off and the hour slash work could be grueling. As I try my best to follow standard operating procedures, my project managers consistently complain about my pace of work. 
I am regularly running overtime by a few hours each week. They make it clear they'd prefer I'd work fast enough to complete each day within 8 hours, because of course, you want to get home at a reasonable hour, every day. They even go so far as to give me a time limit per groundwater well that would ideally bring me home each day before overtime. Except they don't account for big city traffic. Traffic control? That we set up if sampling in the street, groundwater well recharge rate, varying seasonally, etc etc. After about 6 months of trying my best to fulfill their expectations, I realized the managers either want me to outright lie on my paperwork, skip my own lunch, or skip steps in the outlined workflow to achieve their goal of bringing me home on time each day. Q. Malicious compliance. I continue to show up and start my day at 4.30 am to beat traffic in the morning. But now I didn't do anything in a rush. I carefully followed every step outlined by our SOP. I take my full 30 minute lunch break and bathroom breaks whenever I feel the need. I chop it up with auditors if they showed up on site. Basically, I did my job, did it correctly and without rush. Which, unfortunately for the company's payroll, always had me sitting in rush hour traffic at the end of the day, logging in 12 to 14 hour days, 5 days a week. My peak was 72 hours worked in one week. The company was in such desperate need of workers because of high turnover that they couldn't let me go. The project managers gave up on trying to push me to move fast. And as a single guy, I loved the cash machine I discovered. Come to find out the company was abusive to a lot of co-workers. I stayed for the year of experience, made good money and quit. I moved on to bigger and better, but always beat any subs I work with to lunch. The last story is called No Entry. This happened quite a few years ago. I started a new job in IT support. After a couple of weeks of training and orientation, I was put on my first early shift. IT support was always the first in the building to make sure all the systems were good before the working day started, so I was given my own key to the front door to unlock the building. The entrance had kind of an airlock system. The outer door was unlocked, but then there was another automatic door that needed a swipe card to open it. Everything was fine for the first few days. Entered the building and got on with work. Then, this particular morning, as I unlocked the door, the head of HR rocked up behind me. I recognized him, as he had sat in on my job interview. I said, good morning, swiped my card and walked in. He followed me. As soon as we were in the building, he pulled me up and told me I shouldn't have let him in without him swiping his pass. His argument was that he might have been fired the day before, so might have been trespassing. The swipe card system was not used to monitor people's work hours or anything like that. I apologized profusely and he said he'd let it go this time as I was new. Fast forward two weeks. I'm unlocking the door and a complete stranger walks up behind me and tries to follow me in. I turn around and ask him to use his pass. He says he has forgotten it. I say then I can't let you in. Then he drops the bombshell. But I'm the CEO. I apologize and say sorry. I only have your word for that and I'm under strict instructions from the head of HR not to let anybody in without a pass on the pain of disciplinary action. He got quite angry and said again he was the CEO. I apologized again but left him in the airlock with a face like thunder and heard him shout something like I'll have your job for this as I walked away. Later that day I got a phone call from the head of HR. I thought he was going to bollock me but instead he said that I did the right thing and he was going to get the CEO to apologize to me. I did get a short email from the CEO to that effect later in the day. And with that, we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and want to support me, please subscribe and hit the like button. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.